Hello, my name is Colby from StarlinkHardware.com and in this video I'm going to be doing an unboxing of Starlink's next generation hardware, the Gen 3 Standard. So I just received it today. Uh, this is the box that it comes in. As you can see, much slimmer, much lower profile than the previous gens. And that's because it doesn't have motors or a mast. As you can see by the illustration here on the outside of the box, you just have a kickstand that's included with it. So in this video, I'm just going to be going through the unboxing and giving you my initial impressions and opinions and going over the context of some of the features on the kit contents. So let's jump right on into it. So opening up the box, you are presented with the Starlink Gen 3 standard intent. And the first thing that pops out is this little kickstand. So this is the standard base that you can use for portable use or flat mounting for permanent use. And it does have some uh, screw holes here so that you can permanently attach it to your flat roof or an RV roof or whatever the case you, you have. Uh, it's really only good for portable or flat application. It's not going to be good for permanent home installation on your roof or any other angled surface. So the design of the dish is a lot different than the previous generation Starlink. You'll notice that you've got a much more angular design on the back here versus the more smooth rounded back casing design of the Gen 2. And then if we flip it over, you'll notice that the dish itself is about four inches longer than Gen 2. It's just about the same width though. And even though it's kind of it's kind of heavy feeling, and even though it doesn't have the mass or the motors, it's actually still about the same weight as the Gen 2 antenna with the mast. So that's kind of interesting. Uh, it must be because of the increased size and the fact that they packed in more stuff into a smaller package. So staying with the antenna here. Let's go back to the kickstand. So this is removable. So you lift up on this little tab right here and pull out. That gives you this little removable antenna. If you're not gonna use it, you can set it aside. Other mounts that Starlink sells for this Gen 3 will slide in place of the kickstand. So if you're gonna be permanently mounting it to your home, that's what you'll do. You'll remove the kickstand and for example, the wall mount will come with a section right here that snaps into place and allows you to use it as a wall mount. Removing the kickstand also gives you more access to one of the interesting parts about Gen 3, which is the fact that they have standard Ethernet ports again. So Gen 2 had those proprietary Starlink connectors, which everyone seemed to hate. There were a lot of problems with them. Starlink has ditched those and now they've gone back to standard RJ45 connectors for Gen 3. So that's what that is right there. That's your Starlink cable port, just a standard RJ45 jack. And then you also have some other uh, model number, serial number information printed here, safety regulatory information as well. Um, besides that, nothing much on the back. And then on the front here, pretty much the same story, just your phased array antenna face, pretty much the same as the other generation Starlink, nothing new there. It does have a little bit higher field of view. It, does have, it is a little bit more powerful of an antenna, so that should help reliability and weather compared to Gen 2. Uh, but I, you're not gonna see any increased internet speeds or anything like that with, with this over Gen 1 or Gen 2. So my initial impressions as far as quality goes, um, it is all plastic, just like the other Starlink generations. Uh, I don't, I'm not noticing anything horrible uh, as far as quality control or build quality issues. I am noticing in the corners, there is kind of a gap here where the plastic on the back kind of has lifted up. It doesn't really press in further. And that's actually the case on all the corners. So that's gotta be a, I don't know if you can see that in the video, but that's gonna be kind of a quality issue. Maybe they'll iron those things out as time goes on. But let's go ahead and put the kickstand back and set this aside for now. Moving on in the box here, we've got Starlink's informational card that tells you how to set it up. So pretty standard stuff. If you've done a Starlink kit installation, you have 
Uh, the first thing it's telling you to download the app that will allow you to scan the sky for obstructions and the location. And then you set everything up, fly everything in, try to find an area where there's no tall trees around. And then you can use the app to manually aim this antenna. So one of the big differences between Gen 2 and Gen 3 is the fact that this doesn't have motors. So you will have to use the app, manually paint, point this dish to the north. That's if you're in the northern hemisphere. You'll pretty much just point it due north or whatever the Starlink app tells you, and that's it. You won't have to readjust it again. I know everyone's kind of freaking out about this, but I don't, I don't really think it's a big deal at all. You'll kind of set it and forget it kind of deal. So that's the information card. Moving on now to the kit here. First thing to look at is the Starlink cable itself. So like I mentioned, we've gone back to standard RJ45 connectors, which is really nice. You, that enables you to use aftermarket cables if you'd like to. Um, I recommend sticking with the Starlink cable because they have these little moisture seals that help to hold this connector in. This is actually a passive latch design. So let me demonstrate that real quick. So the Starlink cable is the same on both ends, so it doesn't matter which end goes into the dish, but to plug it in, you just insert it with the tab up, just like that. Now, obviously you can't reach the latch area, so how do you get it out? Well, like I said, it's a passive design, so you literally just pull it out, give it some force, wiggle it a little bit, and it comes out. So if you do use an aftermarket cable, just be aware that the latch is not going to work properly. It's not going to actually latch in there as tightly as this one would, just because it has those added moisture seals to give it a little bit more friction to be able to stay in the, the connector a little bit better. This is a 50 foot cable that comes in this Gen 3 standard kit. They do have a 150 foot cable option available in the shop as an optional accessory. You get a regulatory notice and safety information card. Now, power supply. This is another interesting change from Gen 2. So in Gen 2, the router was both the router and the power supply for the dish. They have separated it again, going back to like more of the design of Gen 1, where you have this separate power supply brick. And this is actually a lot smaller than I was expecting it to be. You have your AC power input. So this is the, the AC power cord plug it into your standard wall outlet, plug the other end into here, and then you get DC power coming out of the other end of this power adapter. And it runs on, uh, it produces 57 volts of DC power. This barrel style DC plug plugs into the back of your router. That powers the router and it sends power to the dish over the Starlink cable. On the back here, uh, just some information on specifications. Um, it's, like I said, 57 volts of DC output at around three and a half amps. Uh, that's about 195 watts or so. And power input is anywhere from 100 to 240 volts AC. Pretty standard stuff here. And the last thing, and probably the most important improvement over Starlink Gen 2, is this new Gen 3 router. So this is a Wi-Fi 6 version, and previously they had Starlink was using Wi-Fi 5 technology. So this is much improved as far as range and Wi-Fi speeds go. I actually got my hands on a pre-production version that they were sending out for people to test, and I was able to measure about four times faster Wi-Fi speeds at around 50 feet of range from the router from my iPhone using the Starlink Wi-Fi speed test. And that's really impressive. That just tells you that you're getting much better range. So moving on, as far as the Wi-Fi router goes, another big change is the fact that you've got ethernet ports again. So you've got two ethernet ports here to connect to your wired devices if you'd like. The other ports are your Starlink cable port. So this will connect to the Starlink cable and then out to the antenna. And then you've got your DC power input. That's where this one comes into play. You plug it in right there. You also have a hard, 
or a factory reset button, a physical button this time. That's another big change from Gen 2. On Gen 2, the router, you had to physically unplug it and plug it back in about six times. And that was causing a lot of problems for people that lived off grid or had unstable power situations. Sometimes the router would just inadvertently reset itself because power was fluctuating so much. That won't be an issue here. They've gone back to the uh, hardware button that you can use a little paper clip or something to hard reset this router. And then you have just the information on the bottom here as far as power inputs. One of the very interesting things about this is that it's kind of a dual purpose router. So they're gonna make just one version. This one works not only as the main router for a Gen 3 system, but it can also work as a standalone mesh node or primary router for a Gen 1 or Gen 2 system. Now, only with the Gen 3 kit does it use this power supply. And like I said earlier, this produces about 57 volts DC, which inputs into here, sends power onto the dish. But what if you're just using it as a mesh node? Well, if you buy just the standalone router, or you buy it as a router for your Gen 1 or Gen 2 system, Strong will send you not this, but actually another wall adapter. That wall adapter is 30 volts DC. So if you look on the bottom of this Gen 3 router, you notice it has two input specifications. And that's why that is. It's because you can either power it from the wall adapter, where this will just operate as a standalone unit, or you can power it via the Gen 3 power adapter, where it will actually send power uh, via power over ethernet, PoE, to the dish. So two power input options there, that's kind of interesting. And the other interesting uh, design choice over Gen 2, you can't see it because I don't have it powered on, but there is actually a status LED that will light up right here. And it is multicolored, so it will tell you if you have a problem, it'll show up red versus um, just white for a standard operation. That's pretty neat. None of these light up still, so this is, this is just a graphic. Finally, the one other thing that I wanted to point out is you're probably not going to be able to see it on this video. You'll just have to wait till you get your own. But inside, printed on the circuit boards on each one of the Ethernet jacks here is a little Easter egg graphic. So this one on the strong cable side uh, says to Mars and beyond. It's printed in there. This one says made on Earth by humans. And over here, you got a little artwork depicting, uh, it looks like a rocket launch. So probably one of the SpaceX rocket launches. So that's kind of a cool little hidden, little Easter egg feature there. And by the way, I didn't mention this one, I took it off, but this is the, uh, basically just a moisture seal. So it protects those ports. If you're not gonna be using them, you can just leave that in place. This is kind of a rubber material. Everything else on the router is plastic, pretty much standard, what you get with electronics these days. And that is about it for the new Gen 3 router. So guys, that's it. Uh, that's everything that is included in the Gen 3 standard kit. I'll have more videos to come. I'm gonna be doing a tutorial on how to set up and install a Gen 3. I'm gonna be doing a video on how to aim it. And we'll also do a full in-depth review at some point in the future. Um, it takes time to produce those videos. So you want to make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, number one. But number two, go to our website, strongcardware.com. Make sure to sign up for our newsletter so you don't miss any of the blog articles that I post about Gen 3. Not all the content will match between my YouTube channel and blog, so make sure you're subscribed to both. But thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this unboxing of the Strong Gen 3 antenna. Let me know if you have any questions or feedback in the comments below. We'll see you next time. Thank you.